Happy Christmas, everyone. It's been a very long day. I decided to, to come back and do this room today before Christmas Day, Eve, however you want to call it. It's very different, I know. So we opened presents today. I have Christmas with my family. It was a great day. I'm really tired, <clears throat> but I'm going to do this room anyways. So the story is as the following. Max Kitty has learned a lot about how Grinch Enterprises operates and wants to prepare for any future attacks from anyone who hates Christmas. Okay. From forensics and analysis they did, she noticed that the Grinch Enterprises performed so many activities. She wants to perform these on the same machine they compromised to understand her adversaries a little better. Alright then. Can you follow along to help her prepare for other attacks? Let's try and do that. First of all, we need to learn about post exploitation. It's usually about escalating privileges and maintaining some sort of persistence. Basically means that how would you stay on the target after you hacked it? Because if you do not have a way to get back on the target without hacking it all over again, that is not what maintaining persistence means. Maintaining persistence would be installing some sort of backdoor or service or whatever, listening for my connection, always. So, password hashing is another thing we should learn about. It's basically you take uh, some clear text string and you <coughs> use some algorithm and you get some whatever mishmash out of it. Depending on the algorithm, it will be either longer or looking different from what you see here. So you can see there's the different passwords. I guess these are the correct hashes, you know, I I would guess they are. You know, you can always go to CrackStation and just try and, um, well basically this is part one to three, so CrackStation, put it in, and then I'm pretty sure it's just another, nope. So, it was just some example hashes, it would seem. This isn't, let me just take another one. Just try it. No, nope. just some example hashes, it would seem. So, it, anyways, it doesn't really matter. So, authentication and hashing. So, Windows stores various credentials in the SAM security account manager database. Um, they are hashed within the same database, the SAM database. So there are two most common hashes stored in SAM. They are LAN, LM, and the NT LM. The LAN one is the oldest form of password storage for Windows, but it is kept around for legacy systems. And this of course poses a security risk because the algorithms are um, not that great, you can say. Um, NTLM, modern Windows systems, uses hashing of them to store passwords. So it talks about when you log on to a local machine, <coughs> the local security administrator or the service, local security authority subsystem service, there you go, LSAS, <laughs> process retrieve, they use credentials from the SAM database, it compares this against just any normal login mechanism like some comparison going on, that's very basic. <coughs> Dumping passwords. So the product machine attached to the task um, and we have the IP address here which is of course now put in. The machine is accessible by browser. You can also SSH or I mean, sorry, IDP remote desktop uh, into them by using these credentials here. So I just need to deploy the attack box. So I'm I'm not sure I'm going to do that. Let's see if I'm going to just use my own, my own because I'm already I'm already on a Linux KD machine. So they talk about when a target gets access to a local machine system, one of the first things they would do is to dump the password hashes stored in the LSAS process. Since LSAS process has to interact with the same database and store credentials in memory, it usually runs with more privileges than a standard user. So we would probably need to get some administrator access to get the dump. For an attacker to attack with LSAS, need to have high privileges. 
A standard tool used to retrieve password hashes from memory is called Mimikatz. And it has various modules that can use extractive kind of credentials from memory and use these credentials to access user accounts. So for this exercise, we'll be using Securlsa sec module. And I cannot even pronounce that right now. Open PowerShell using the start menu, navigate to this one and run the mini Mimikatz program. So we're gonna go to our Windows machine. We have a Mimikatz folder here with the the program. I'm pretty sure that is the yeah desktop the path to it. So we're gonna launch PowerShell. Yeah, so we're gonna right click and run it administrator. And I think if we do like edit, no properties, fonts, and I do like 20 or something, we could get a bigger window so you guys can see what I do. And it talks about navigate to this, so let's see. Um, can we just copy that basically? What did I just do? Did I close the window? No. I don't know why I did that. It's a typical reaction. Yeah. So CD. Let's go down again. Desktop. Mimi cats. Yeah, and I want me to access the X forty six. So here we have it. Um, I'm gonna write there. And we can see the Mimi cats program lying right there. So I'm gonna go back. I want me to. Uh, run the program. So basically, I'm gonna write Mimi Cats. Mimi Cats. No. Nope. Like that. And now we're inside the program. It is now kind of running, so we need to go back and get further instructions for what to do. First thing we need to do is use the following command to check if you have appropriate privilege to run the program. So we're gonna write. Uh, privilege debug, so you can spell to that. Already I see spelling issues here. Privilege. Wasn't it two times? No. So it does say 200, sorry, 20 okay. So <clears throat> that's what we are expecting to see. Once you have verified that you approach privileges, you can dump the password to LSAS using the sick Curlsa module. So what we're gonna do is write sick Curlsa colon colon log on password sick Curlsa Let me just see if I got that correct. Log on passwords Lock on, Jesus. There we go. Go right this, and now we get all the different kind of users done to the screen. So I'm going to scroll up to the top and see we have administrator here, and see the password is. We have some hashes here going on, so let's see. What we else got some Emily user with another hash. All right then. So it's about time to crack the password. So what we're gonna do now is from the above output, you can see that we could obtain the LTML and SHA one hash for another user logon to the machine. 
Well, we have the NTLM password hash. Let's try to crack it and, ret and retrieve the clear text password. So we need to save some password. So let's see which one in the previous section we mentioned we could. Um, did that tell us which password? Yeah, it's it's Emily. All right, so let's uh, scroll down and see what the questions are one more time. What is the username of the other user of the system? So that would be Emily, I guess. All right, what is the hash of that user? So let's take the hash, it would be this one. Let me see if I can copy paste today. So copy and paste, and success. And what is the password for that user? So <clears throat> let's go ahead and let's go ahead and Scroll to the bottom of this window and go back to the actual guide. So now we need to use John the River, which is a tool on the attack box. So I think I have John installed on my Linux Kali machine. So let's see, John, I did. So what I need to do is uh, go to desktop and create a folder called Christmas. Inside the folder I'm gonna echo let's see if we can get the string that I just copy pasted. So let's see. I was the window again. There we go. I'm gonna save that into a file called hash the text. And we can see what's inside of it by doing a cat. So We don't need the machine anymore since we have our hash already saved. So let's see if we can get the. Did I close the. I totally did. Let's go back to Firefox and go back to try hack me. What did I do before I exit the window? Is this overlaying? I need to get this away. That's not sticky. Yeah, that's what happened. So I'm gonna. Go back, and in order to crack this hash, we need to do something like John format nt uh, supply list for the password hashes, point to the actual hash, and this is going to be the output file. So I'm going to copy this, go to my terminal, <coughs> paste it in, and basically. I think, let's see if I got the user share word lists and I have the rock user. So I'm going to unzip that. Uh, I 
was it I did that? So I'm gonna go right ahead and do a gun sip. Um, that's pseudo privileges. Now I have the file rock you. I'm gonna run the command now. And it would seem that the password is this. Whoops, I think at least it is. Let's see. And we are correct. So, it's a very weak password for a user. So, whenever we're using John the River to crack a password, we need to supply it with a hash. I'm going to zoom a bit here, which is this argument here. That one is optional, so we could go to the terminal, I guess, and and then nano inside the output file. And we're gonna get the actual hash here with the password afterwards. But it's also outputted to the screen. And we also need to supply a word list. So it, it is a guessing game whenever it's hashing. And we need to supply the format, which is NT, um, which stands for new technology. It's an old joke. And John is the actual program. So today's video was about, I guess they could call it privilege escalation. We could go further and, and you know, uh, find the password for a user with higher privileges and then lock in with that one and get higher privileges and then get full control of the system. But for today, I'm just gonna finish the room and I'm gonna once again say happy Christmas to all of you. And I wanna see you again, I guess tomorrow if they release their 25th room. I, there's a slight chance they do. Let's just go ahead and, and see how they did it. The other advent of Cybers. Uh, let's see, advent of Cyber 2020. So we did like, I didn't, I didn't think I did this at all. They did down to, they did it down to day 24. So, and the thank you is probably just gonna be some, some message. So if this was the last room, which I assume it was, I'm gonna continue creating videos. Uh, about different rooms on Try Hack Me and other interesting cyber security uh, topics. So, I hope you liked this video. If you did so, please consider subscribing to the channel, leave a comment below, and I'm gonna get back to you.